folks, Tom Bassel here. D. Garcia, what's happening? We're talking about games that are in or are coming out, we hope, maybe possibly at Gen Con 2014. In our last video, we explained a bit more about that and also talked about the games that were from the A companies. Do not worry, there's not 26 videos. Wouldn't that be funny, though? X companies. Oh, no, no. We can. A had Asmo Day in it. That's a ton of It had Asmo Day and AEG. That was and the main AEG thing. AEG in it. So this will pick up. So here we go. The B's. Bezier Games. Mm -hmm. Ted Osbach, known for Ultimate Werewolf. And in fact, they'll have Ultimate Werewolf Deluxe Edition, which is a little confusing. But just suffice it to say that when they have a new edition, it's better than all their previous editions. Because they had Ultimate Werewolf and then Ultimate Ultimate Edition. And uh, at some point, it's... he will package a werewolf in a box and sell it to <laughs> I cannot wait. I will wait for the ultimate real life edition. He'll also be demoing the castles of Mad King Ludwig, but the big game that they'll be releasing is Subdivision, which has the same theme as Suburbia, but it's not anything alike. Essentially, each player is a board, and you'll be you have these tiles that you'll be placing onto the board. Players will be have their own board, and you're trying to score the most points. That's essentially all I know. I just know that it's a lighter game. Right. Um, and it, it's gotten good feedback. Uh, one guy at Origins came to me. As soon as he played, he said, Spiel des Jahres. Wow. Which is probably not going to happen, because yeah. it's it, any game released now always has a hard time because it's a long time. Because right? it's a long time to the award. But still, that's the type of game I'm always interested in. Absolutely. Then Bigfootis. Bigfoot says. Bigfoot says games. <laughs> yes. We should Big, pause here by saying. Bigfoots. Is, think yeah. about what you name your company. <laughs> well, again, it's one of those. I've always said, don't name, name your company, company after your first game. Yeah. So Bigfoots' company, Bigfoots' game is putting out Bigfoots's. The card, card game. <laughs> here's here's what I've heard about this game. That people who it, it looks like a take that game, but some of the early reviews said that it's really close to Munchkin on I, how it plays. Again, I knew nothing about it until I did my research for this, and it looks like reskinned Munchkin. It looks like exactly the same thing. You are trying to get ten. So maybe points. if you go by their booth, you'll meet a Steve Jackson representative who's in the process of suing them. Maybe. Probably not, but because reskins are not illegal. Yeah, but who knows? But if you like Munchkin, you like Big Feet, I guess, check out Big Footses. Now we get to Blue Orange Games, which I know Z is pumped to talk about a little bit. I am bit. actually pumped to talk about these Well, guys. first we'll talk about, there's a few games that I've already reviewed, have been out for a bit. Brave Rats, which is a retheming of the Japanese game R. Yeah. Um, Battle Sheep, which Z and I actually reviewed together. Mm -hmm. And... Then there's this game called Armadora, which is a game that came out, I think, 10 years ago called Nuggets. Right, it's a reprint of it. And they're reprinting it, and it looks really cool. Yeah, and it's basically, it's a pretty abstract game, though. It's, it's sort of, a, you know, numbered tiles and num on a numbered, you know, board with uh, squares on it. So, so it, it looks abstract, but looking at the new one versus looking at the old one, it's considerably more gorgeous and now it has a fantasy theme sort of put on top of it um, yeah I'm excited about it it looks neat and it looks like the kind of thing I would enjoy Armadora then the next two games have the same publisher I mean same designer I mean that they're both from Blue Orange Games Longhorn and Nia Bruno Catala yes Z's a fanboy I am a fanboy um, and he'll be there actually <laughs> And these are... I he will actually not be there with Blue Orange Games. He'll be there with another publisher, which we'll talk about briefly. <laughs> I, um, I think I'm he has really... four different games coming out at Gen Con. He does. Uh, yeah, Bruno Catala has a lot of games coming out this year. Abyss was his. Oh, so, already, yeah. And uh, on the previous list. And these are both two-player games. They're both quick games. Uh, Abstract-ish. Well, that's what Blue Orange Games is. And, yeah. I, and, I'm, and I'm a big fan of them for that. Right, right, right. And they've been coming up with some really... I mean, I, I am so thrilled with this new push they're doing into these really cool games with great bits. You know, yeah, great high quality. Components. Man. Through the roof. Um, so I'm very excited about these. I think they both look good. Longhorn was out last year at Essen in limited quantities. And um, it's a very cool cowboy... Theme where you're controlling cat land and gathering cattle and trying to mess over your opponent. And then Nia is even more abstract than that. It's a two-player simple game, which is um, sort of a simplified version of the, the designer's older game, Come On, or Kamen. This is K-A-O-K-A-M-O-N, 
and it's uh, an abstract game where your choices from turn to turn sort of dwindle and diminish. Which is doing he's doing a lot of that lately, actually. Um, where instead of starting with a small pool of options and they grow, you start with all the options and they kind of dwindle. Very interesting. I'm excited about both of those. All right, and uh, they also have Doodle Quest. Doodle Quest, which I'll be reviewing tomorrow or the next day with my kids. Really fun game where you draw on a transparency and you stick it on top of a board and hopefully you drew correctly. Yeah, it looks very neat. Then we have Break From Reality Games, Damage Report, which is a co-op space game, real-time game. I've already reviewed that, but I think this is the first convention they're showing it off at. Mm -hmm. um, Brother Wise Games is showing off Boss, Boss Monster, the dungeon building card game. Nothing new for them either, but I'd mention it because it might be the first time people can see it at a convention. Yeah. yeah. Not a big fan of it myself, it's, but... It's been out. Okay. Calliope Games will have the Gen Con Limited Edition Roll For It tin. Have you played Roll For It yet? No, I haven't. You know, and I, I saw this on the list, and I, was, I thought to myself, this might be the time to pick up Roll For It. It's cute. It's simple. I could get to play with friends and family, and... Um... The Gen Con Limited Edition tin kind of sounds cool. Yeah, I'll be doing a Roll For It review either this week or next week. And essentially it is like the gateway, gateway game in a sense. Yeah. You can play Roll For It with anybody. Mm -hmm. um, I, and, I, and, I, and the reason I know this is because my non-gamer kids liked it more than the gamer kids. Right. Because of that rolling dice. Yeah, if you have people who like Yahtzee, you can bust this out and they will like it. Catalyst Game Labs. Wasn't able to get from them everything that they were have out. See, by the way, we're in the seas, if you noticed. Um, but Shadowrun Crossfire, which Z and I both about. already reviewed. You can go check out that. But I think that's going to be, I think that will be one of the bigger releases at the convention. It, it should be, honestly. It's a great game. They'll also be selling the character expansion pack for those people who hate the fact that you put stickers in the game. You can buy <laughs> a whole ton more sheets and stickers. And I don't know. Anyway, that's cool. I don't know for sure, but I think they're also going to have some more expansions for the Duke there. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's very cool. And then, of course, Elder Battletech stuff and all yeah. that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Then we're at Clever Games, who are making the Clever Card Game. Ha-ha! Bigfoots is indeed. Um, now, I looked at this, and this is basically, appears to be a game system in which you have a deck of cards, which has numbers, colors, letters, and animal in the center and you can play many games with it, supposedly. It, so it's this not, has never worked. I agree. The peace with you, pack never took off. The pyramids was the closest. That's what they're going for. It's it's a game system. Now I don't know if it includes games. I would hope it does. And they, of course, point you to the internet and tell you, well, there's all these other great games other people have come up with. I don't know, didn't catch my eye, but that's the idea. A game system called the Clever System. Continuing on our seas, we have Columbia Games, which will be maybe have Vic Victory in Europe, which was a big block war game. Mm -hmm. They kickstarted it, so it may or may not be there. A smaller block war games, two of them from Conquistador Games, mm -hmm. uh, War Stories Liberty Road and War Stories Red Storm. These kind of intrigue me a little bit because they're like little block war game type things, but they say 30 minutes. Yeah, smaller, yeah, block war games in, in a smaller scale. They, they looked interesting. It's absolutely not my kind of game, but... But Conquistador has done some good stuff in the past. Right. Uh, the when, new science... When they I say think, 30 minutes, it kind of makes me think, really? How? Like, what, what are you doing? It's got to be pretty interesting. All right. Then a new company that I know of, Continuum Games, is doing Mega Monster City Smash. <laughs> this is one of, I think, four monster smashing games. We've already mentioned R from Ape Games. And, RAR, yeah. Or, uh, RAR, and there's a much bigger one we'll be talking about later right. on. Um, now that you look at this game, this is basically... <laughs> yes, yes, I did. This is a toy. <laughs> it's really what it is. You it's build your town, game. and then you wind up the... It's, a, it's like a remote-controlled little robot. Uh, like monster, you know, and you build up a little, yeah, like town of blocks, plastic blocks, and then you smash it with your little remote-controlled robot guy. It looks, cr I mean, I don't know what to Here's the deal. When you say that, I'm sitting there going, that sounds fun. No, it sounds like a toy, I mean. Yeah, but it sounds like a toy I would play. And I mean, it sounds <laughs> strange. I will go look at it, but... It sounds weird. I will stick with any of the other monster games, I think. 
All right, cool mini or not, we'll be having quite a few games. I don't nothing brand new at the convention. Mm -hmm. I mean, other than they'll have Chaos Ball that they'll be selling. They'll have demos of some of their new games like uh, Arcadia Quest and things like Which that. Which you've played a demo of already, yeah? Yes. And thumbs up. And we'll have a review for that up hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Cool. Um, Cryptozoic never got back to me about the games that they're going to have at the fair, but I'm assuming they're going to have new stuff there. And there um, should be plentiful things. Uh, I know that they, they, they made a... They, they're, start, they're into like the CCG business now. First they did it with that Adventure Time with right, Finn and Jake. Right. Now they're doing one for Ender's Game, too. Really? Yeah. So. Interesting. So now skipping to D's, Days of Wonder. Now, if you know anything about Days of Wonder, you'll know that they only ever release one game at a convention. <laughs> Yeah, not every year either, you know. <laughs> yeah. It might take a while. Well, so. actually, though, I, 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 they probably will have, I, I didn't get this on the list, but they'll probably, since it just came out a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. have their new map pack for Memoir 44. Okay. Um, the, to, to mem to, Memoir 44 is 10 years old, so they'll have that there. I'm sure they'll also be selling the Ticket to Ride 10th Anniversary, anniversary Edition. Oh, definitely. Sure, okay. Sure. Although, as much as I like the Ticket to Ride 10th Anniversary Edition, Go play their mega ticket to ride game. You're like, oh, I want to take this home. You know, to pick up the trains that are this big. But they have a new game coming out called Five Tribes, which is designed by Bruno Catala yet again. <laughs> the thing about Five Tribes is Days of Wonder is known for their fairly light games. Right. I mean, they're or, or, or light to medium games, ticket to family ride games, family games. They and they, they themselves are touting this as their first. Gamers game. Right. They're saying it's a heavy gamers game and the components, there's a lot of components right, in this right. su sucker. And the idea here is, once again, uh, a game in which obviously has a, you know, Thousand and One Nights Arabian theme. And uh, the design is, again, abstract-ish, but with a lot going on. And you are starting with a massive pool of choices and, and your choices as the game progresses dwindle. And it has a little bit of a, like a Mancala thing going on to it. This looks like my Trajan. It's the first thing I thought when I, when I figured out how the game played. I'm like, oh, okay. So this is a Trajan. Bruno Catala could design me, yeah. a Stefan Feld game and you would like it. You'd be like, I, I, it's fun. It would have more action cards. That's <laughs> the thing. You know? Anyway, this is one of the games that I'm very interested in at the convention. All right, Devious Weasel Games. Good name for company. Awesome. Shadows of Malice. Mm -hmm. So what do we know about this one? Shadows of Malice was, um, it just looks like an Amerithrash co-op kind of game. And uh, it, it looked interesting, actually. It looks like there's a bunch of dice chucking and lots going on in it. Um, pretty board with like a hex overlay. And I had not heard a thing about it. But hey, co-op, looks good. I'm interested. All right. Um, then we move on to Eagle slash Griffin Games. Mm -hmm. They don't have their own booth. They'll be with Cool Stuff, as is in our last episode we talked about 8th Summit, um, and as is a, a little company called the Dice Tower. <laughs> so, but anyway, Eagle Griffin will have a Cubist, which is a dice building game, Rucksack, a Petite Pastiche, which is a smaller version of their popular art game, Games of Art, which is a book. Have you seen this one? I have not. I'll have to show it to you when we're done here. It's, it's, a, it's a book where you can flip through the book, and there's different games. I think Sid Saxon designed them. Oh, I have. I have. Where you, you color them with markers and different things. Yes, that's right. Okay. They're, they're really... It's interesting. It's, um, it, it's like a perfect thing to take on a, a car trip, I think. Right. We'll and sit in the back. A plane or something. Well, Absolutely. they're not... They're pretty... In, I don't know if they're kid games. They're, they're pretty, I mean, they look like kid games, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of thought that goes into them. Cool. Six Saxons, it's interesting. Then Nika and Lords and Ladies, which I know has been thinking about. And you know what? Not only that, I bet you they have the new, um, what's that uh, deck building game I just showed it to you before we start recording these videos? Fantastica. They're, they're a smaller version of Fantastica. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Then from Eden Studios, we have Adventure Maximus. Now this one I have no idea about. So look at the picture, and hopefully it is a fun game. Then from Evil Hat Productions, we have Zeppelin Attack. Now this I did look at, and this looks neat. This this did that trick on my mind where it started to move up and up. Here's the thing. If, the first thing that it did, though, is it reminded me of this game we played a long time ago, which was really bad about Zeppelins. 
and I forget what that game was called. Well, there's a lot of them that are really bad about uh, Zeppelin. One that was kind of like okay. Citadels. This is the game that when this is when AEG first came out with games. Mad Zeppelin, you're thinking That's of. That's it. And that game was not so good. I was gonna say I don't know that I played a good game about Zeppelins yet because then there was that uh, Zeppelin game, uh, not Mercury. What's the thing in the thermometer? Mercury. No, that was Mercury. Quicksilver. Quicksilver. Okay. Quicksilver uh, was kind of a boring race game. And then right. there's a one that just came out from um, a company, and I was like, eh. And, now, this looks cool. But this though. is deck building. Yeah, it's a deck building game in which you are... Um, it's, it's sort of like one of those reduced deck building games. Make, makes me think of Valley of the Kings a little bit, in which it's not 500 cards, but it's a tight deck building game. The artwork looks really cool. Graphic design looks neat, and from what I read about it, it sounds like the gameplay is actually very interesting. I, I, I'm looking forward to checking it out. Now we go to Fantasy Flight Games, who tells us absolutely nothing <laughs> about what they're going to have. Games. They want and games. They always have big new games there, but 99.9% .9 chance they're going to have the new Warhammer 40,000 Conquest game there. Yeah. Their new limit card, oh, limit, living card game. Based on Warhammer 40, they're having a tournament. You have to bring your own supplies to go to the tournament. So, probably will be there. You kinda, okay, You kind of got to get it there. I'm also suspecting that they're going to have the Witcher Adventure game there. The, everything I say about Fantasy Fight from this point is conjecture. Yeah. However, the Witcher Adventure game, which is based on a popular series, The Witcher, was right. designed by Ignatius Trebuchek. Ignacy Trebuchek, yeah. And he is going to be there. Mm -hmm. So it seems like it would be a good opportunity for them to debut it there. Sure, sure. Yeah, and it's, it's sound, it sounds like it's about ready. I know the game's been done. I've seen it being played at um, video game conventions and such because it's a tie-in to the Witcher video game series. And so it feels like it's ready to be there. We don't know, but it probably will be. Here's what else I think they'll have. I think they'll have the new Cosmic Dominion expansion. Yes. I'm hoping. But I think they'll have the new Rebel Aces pack. Mm -hmm. um, I think they'll have the new Manor of Ravens, the Sen expansion. And I think they might have a new expansion for Eldritch Horror. I don't know. They released the other one in February, so it seems maybe it might be possible. Maybe, maybe. And then at least one thing we have no idea about. Right. Or, and they'll be demoing it. So here's my wild guesses. Okay? Just guesses. I think <laughs> they're finally going to do Runebound 3rd Edition. Okay. They've let that one sit for a long time. Um, it's, a, it's a property that they've used, the Terranoth universe. They've used it for D Descent and a lot of their other games. And unless this Witcher game is their big adventure game. Right. And then it will be, but I think they might announce this anyway. Or here's something cool I think they could announce. The revised version of Doom. Okay. Because Doom started the whole Descent thing. And then it's been outdated and such. Or something that's based on that system. Some Descent thing, but it's sci-fi. Because if they don't fill up that space, the other companies are going to run with it. Yeah. we got Level 7 Omega Protocol. And um, Bonacore uh, with Stronghold Games is doing the... Uh, he's has one that's based on Jeff Engelstein's game. Right, the Die Fighter? No, not Die oh, Fighter. No, no. Uh, space Cadets. But it's Space Cadets like... Away Missions. Away oh, Missions, yes, right. right. So Now, here's my wild prediction, and this is more of a pipe dream than anything else, but I am hoping that they will finally reprint and maybe even update Blue Moon City, which they've also let sit. And they just came out with Blue Moon Legends last year, and that came out of left field. Nobody saw that coming. Yeah, I was a little surprised and, at that uh, one. So maybe, who knows, maybe they want to keep it going. Blue Moon City, reprint. I'm going to give up on my Twilight Imperium 4th. Prediction. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to keep saying that every year. So now I'm going to say I think they're going to announce some sort of Star Wars land battles. I okay. can't see how they would not have this moneymaker, because they, they have the rights to miniature games, right. and their X-Wing is flying off the shelves. You can't tell me if they made things where you buy little ad-ats and stuff, and, but people wouldn't buy those. Come on. Remade of Wreckage, the old fantasy flight. Oh, wreckage. using the Wreckage system. Okay, money out. It's a throwback. Look it up. We have no idea of any of this, and when Gen Con comes, we're going to be tweeting stuff like, Holy cow! We had no clue! Because last year they reprinted Battle Lore and Disc Wars. We're, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No idea. So anyhow. Um, Floodgate... Oh, no, wait. Fireside Games, who did Castle Panic. 
mm -hmm. and Zombie Panic is now doing Munchkin Panic. And they did an unboxing video, which I thought was hilarious, uh, that they were talking about the game, and then they said, what are the differences between Munchkin and Munchkin Panic? Oh, right. Which I thought, well, that's kind of obvious, but to a Munchkin player, that wouldn't be. And I know that this is getting poo-pooed on a lot, like, uh... I think this is a cool thing, though. This is great Because I, I, mean. I think Munchkin players will come in and play this and be like, wow, this is fun. What other cooperative games are there? Right, right, right. Yeah, and it's a good move for them, absolutely. You know, the, the more power to them. I think it'll... I, hopefully it'll be a good seller for them. Then we have uh, Floodgate Games. They did um, that Time Legacy... Legacy Gears of Time. Right. Okay? Right. They have two games coming out. One is Epic Resort, which is like a worker placement game, but you're using cards as your, as your workers, mm -hmm. and you're trying to get tourists to come to your island resort, who then I might be attacked by monsters. So I'm not really sure, but they, they did some pretty good... They've done the only time travel game I think is worth playing. Right, right. Then they have another one called King of Clubs, which has nothing to do with cards, but is actually you are the king of the club scene. You're, you're right, right, right. <laughs> It's a game in which you are... It's a very, very light game. Um, it says it plays in just like 10 or 15 minutes, and you're basically going out and trying to... I think it's a bluffing game, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, a little, tiny little card game that they're selling for 10 or 15 bucks, and there's not a whole lot of information out there about it, but it looks cute, and the artwork has that really neat, uh, almost yellow kind of look to it, you know? And... Uh, very light and fluffy, though, but it looks nice. And our last F company, Flying Frog Productions. They have a Touch of Evil expansion, Dark Gothic. That's actually the card game. That's the... Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Touch of Evil Dark Gothic, the Forgotten Island game supplement. Mm -hmm. And the Dark Gothic is the sort of the spin-off game that they just put out a few months ago, which is the deck building Have you played game. it? I have not played it. I hear huh. it's very similar to um, the... DC, DC deck building game, you know, is what I've heard. It's very similar to that. I've seen pictures. I've looked into it. But that's their, it's, it's their smallest game. It's a deck builder with um, the uh, Last Night on Earth theme on it. Then they have some expansions. Of evil, so. Conquest of Planet Earth, the Horror Goth game supplement. And I'm excited about that because I love Conquest of Planet Earth. Yeah, yeah. And they have another expansion for, um, uh, not a touch of evil, but their zombie game. Last, uh, night Last Night on Earth, I think some Airborne Strike game or something. That's right. That's right. And then their biggest game, though, the opposite of small. A monster. Is Shadows of Brimstone, City of the Ancients, which was a monster Kickstarter that they ran. Mm -hmm. This is a cooperative dungeon western crawler. <laughs> it's everything. I'm I, 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 intrigued. I'll tell you, this... Uh... This game, I think, will be the, the one that does it for me when it comes to Flying Frog. First of all, the artwork... Wait, you don't like Conquest of Planet Earth? I, I've played Last Night on Earth, and I've played uh, Touch of Evil, are the only two I've played from them. They're both okay games. You would like Conquest they, of Planet Earth. They petered out now. very quickly for me. I kind of lost interest very quickly. This game, Brimstone, Western, Monsters, the artwork is superb. The models are insane. Are you worried about time length, though? Because that's something Flying Frog sometimes has games that are long. Yeah, yeah, I am. But right now, I'm the most excited for this game out of all the games they've ever put out. And and I'm, I, for one, am happy that it has drawn artwork only instead oh. of going for the You pictures. for one, me for two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm excited. It looks like a, like a metric ton of games. See that, folks? We just went all the way up to F in one show. Well, that's it for this time. We'll be back with G in our next episode uh, with more previews of Gen Con games. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. Z Garcia. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.